Britain's Railway. We are to that 18... The oldest and one of the busiest in the world. OK, thank you. Just slow down, slow down. Surely this is illegal to be packed in like this. A huge network under constant pressure. Absolutely mental today. No driver. No driver. Come on, guys, look for the driver in guard. Where anything and everything starts happening, son, can mean delay and chaos for thousands. Backs against the wall. He's got a suicidal female on board. Train now 90 late. I went to hitting a pheasant. I've heard everything now. Filmed over a year across the nation. Hey, that one, fella. That one. There's a seat next to Banana. We go behind the scenes of an industry we all love to complain about. Do you want a hand? It's all in all, that's 323.50. With the railway people determined to keep Britain moving. To infinity, and beyond. Into battle. Baby. They say, if you want to see life, you've got to be working here. See hen parties, stag do's, you know, you can see quite a lot on that here from this point. You see domestics happening? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Not half. <laughs> Rugby fans fighting, football fans fighting. <laughs> You'll see them. <laughs> well, I need some popcorn and uh, <laughs> you know, drink. I'll be all right. <laughs> Best seat in the house. <laughs> Leeds, one of the busiest stations outside London. 100,000 people travel through here every day, commuting in from towns across Yorkshire and onwards to all corners of the country. This is an announcement for passengers travelling to Geisley, Menston, Berlin, Walkdale, Skipton, Gardbrae, Halifield, York, Lincoln. And these passengers have been lifted away to one part of the three. Summer has arrived, and the afternoon rush hour is in full swing. Every walk of British life is here. Thank you, bye. Cheers. Help through the ticket barriers by Imran. The ticket not working. Yes, bro, I've been in Russia. Uh, everyone's in a rush. It's not I tell you, it doesn't work. I come through every day. Can you use your ticket, please? Come on, I need to go. What's this ship like? It's all right. Not too bad. I got to see my dad. Well, keep an eye on him. <laughs> I can do it from here. Hanif is one of the longest serving staff here at Leeds. He's worked on this customer information point for the past 26 years. <laughs> He's just about to miss one. Sorry about that. Imran followed his dad onto the railways, joining at just 18. Did you say your, What's that? Did you say your grandfather worked in the railways? Yeah, grandfather worked in the depot. He was a cleaner. Dad, yeah. What, what did your your dad do? Worked in Kenya. Railway. Railway. Yeah. Didn't know that. <laughs> four, four generations. Then uh, I've got me two brothers that work here, uh, alias Idris. Uh, then Uncle Khalifa. You can say that. Railway family. We yeah, we were born into it. <laughs> That's it. Right, so Ryan, we're going to this lot around here. The English Defence League is en route to one of their regular summer demonstrations across Yorkshire. Today, they're on the 1025 to Dewsbury, escorted by the British Transport Police. No surrender. No surrender. You can take your flags down, all right? You've been escorted, okay? But no shouting, no chanting, nothing like that. Oh, it'd be the greatest job in the world. If what? If we didn't have any passengers. They're lovely. Right around. 
Look at the cows. <sighs> Jason has been driving commuter trains across Yorkshire for the past ten years. I saw him in Leeds station a few years back, uh, carrying on spitting and all shouting vile abuse. And... What shoes do you carry? No, you pay your ticket and you get your carriage, don't you? Cup of tea. It's when the sun comes out. He yeah. puts his hat on. Everybody comes out to play. Usually when I'm at work. Mm. With the sun comes the alcohol, making this a challenging season for everyone at the station. The British Transport Police remove yet another drunk from the platform. Craig is one of 70 police officers based here. The hot weather, of course you drink, you think you're getting hydration, you're not, you're dehydrating with the alcohol or whatever, and people find themselves in a sorry state. Marshmallow man on the rubber carpet. <laughs> Keep talking to us. Are you alright? What's happened? Duncan disorderly on the rest, he's gone down, banged his head on the floor. If you do sort of, you know, stop and look, I think, well, what's your story? Because everybody's got a story, and we find ourselves in quite a privileged position because we walk into somebody's life at a given moment. You know, it might be a moment of elation, it might be a moment of distress. It might be something that's, you know, troubling them. And all the time you're watching them to think, well, what's your story? What's going on? And these are people who probably make fairly big decisions in, 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 in real life, you know, and they've had a couple of hours of lager too many, and then all of a sudden everything that's organised about them just goes out the window. Drunk passengers are common across the network, but up here in Yorkshire, in the smaller stations outside Leeds, summer brings a unique challenge. Bunch, bunch now, there'll be banana split by 11 o'clock. It's Saturday, and from now on, every weekend, we'll see summer revellers out on the Real Ale Trail. A pub crawl by train. Still every that one, fella. That one. Uh, there's a seat next to Banana. Just part of, all part of my customer service. In my welcoming persona. Hello. 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 It's the most dreaded shift of the week. And today, Jason has drawn the short straw. You live in uh, blissful ignorance until Saturday comes. Then you are gone. Until three years ago, this ordinary stopping service through Yorkshire's prettiest villages was used by just the occasional shopper. What did you do? I'm a train driver. Ooh, do you go to London? No. Do you drive the big one? No. I think that's the public perception that, you know, all the best drivers drive the big shiny ones to London. I can tell you that's not true. What do the best drivers do then, Jason? They provide a public service in the face of adversity. That's what they do. <laughs> what is that adversity? Adversity is usually the public. Since the Real Ale Trail became more well known, the shoppers and their families now find themselves in the middle of a party on the journey from Batley to Staley Bridge. Okay, lads. This pub crawl means real ailers stop off at a station to sample a pint from a nearby pub before catching the train to the next station and pub down the line, and so on. The 
it's a good social study. You should come along, have a watch. The demise of man on the ale trail between the hours of 12 and 8. Like an evolution. You know, they go from standing up all proper to sort of lying in a puddle. Rowdy. Rowdy. Rowdy's the word. By the afternoon, special security teams are drafted in to these usually unmanned stations. The real ale passengers, it seems, need looking after. Yeah, we've just oh, got yeah. um, oh. a word oh. from that we're grey all over. The job when a train's due is not he's not that funny. I just don't want your mate to get killed by a train, mate. Well, if there's a train coming, yeah. Yeah, but it'd be a good funeral, wouldn't it? I mean, he's a great lad. So we've had a report from the West Yorkshire Police from Manchester being in the Slaveweight Station area. Being cautioned in that area, we've seen anything from the Slaveweight Station area. And they've had a report of a man trespassing, which will no doubt be a sign of the Slaveweight Station. Yeah, it's a 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 Slaveweight Station. Yeah, can everyone stand back from the platform edge, please? There are eight stations and pubs along the route, and as the day wears on, drivers, conductors, and the security teams have all become minders. <laughs> ran over the fucking line. Oh, what's that? Yeah, that idea. No. No. Oh. I can't leave here. They're all leaning against the side of the train. <laughs> What's going on here then? Hold it down, they do this, they stand there whilst the mates, you know, the mates can't be bothered running for the train. Shut doors, Jeff! Oh, come on! Jason's train is now delayed, as he can't move until the real ailers are clear of the doors. Get on! Hey! No, it's too late now. No, it's not, come on! It's too late Yep, six minutes down now. Why is that? It's all that. Carry on there. Oh, there's number zero. He's battered, isn't he? He's lucky that express went through a few minutes ago. That lad had sea legs there, so he wouldn't have gone out that way. People just come running across the track. It's just an accident waiting to happen, to be honest. You know, but that's just the way it is on the sail trail. Whilst a handful of passengers can cause difficulty, it only takes one to delay trains right across the network. Route Control to York, Jerry speaking. It's five o'clock in route control, and Jerry and his team have had a call about a train that stopped on the line between Manchester and Leeds. Train running control, York, Jason speaking. A fight's broken out between passengers on board. Lovely, thank you, bye. Hi. Police have arrived. The uh, train won't go forward, and, uh, so it's obviously escalating. Uh, we've got a backlog of trains now. Um, so two Mike 8 3 is the train involved, and that's one that's got the trouble on board. We've got uh, another four, five, six, well, seven trains we've got stood behind. They've now asked for the dam to be blocked as well. Right. would appear the people are spilling onto the track. Police have requested both lines blocked. This is Network Rail Control at York. This is an emergency call for trains in the... Route Control is forced to stop all trains in the area. Please respond. Over. Delays caused by members of the public on the track are a daily occurrence. Trespass becomes frustrating because they shouldn't be there. They're committing an offence. At the end of the day, if this was France or America, we'd run them over. There's no offences in France. People go on the railway, they're at their own, their own, it's their own fault they're there. And America is very much the same. We are perhaps a bit too much in any state, in my opinion, and people go on the railway and it's almost like we've got to stop and protect them. That's the way, that's the way it is. I mean, there's nothing I can do about that. Network Rail has a legion of maintenance staff whose job it is to keep the trespassers off their track. Kev and Stev from the Leeds team have been called out to repair a fence on the outskirts of the city. 
Toodle pip. Give it a shout if you need help. Where are you going? Kirkstall. Kirkstall. Oh, straight ahead. Chances out. No, straight ahead. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Not fucking down there. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. You've got plenty of names. Goosome, twosome. Toot and plute. Well, I won't call him fucking Tom Tom because he don't know it's shagging weight. <laughs> Someone last time there, didn't we? Yeah. Kevin Stever responsible for keeping over 700 miles of fencing intact. Once just a boundary marking, big fences are now the only way to keep the determined trespassers out. Repairs are constant and costly. I'll take a few just in case the bastards have pinged any more off. You can see trespass route. So it's definitely in used. How many's off? Just the one. People don't want to live next to something what looks like Stalag Luft. When what last time you sort of see kids that come along, the stand-up fence, the wave to train drivers? Nah, you know what I mean? Nah, it looks like they're standing there behind back of the fence. <laughs> it don't, it's not the same as what it used to be. <laughs> It, it seems to be, I don't know, it's like a, a, a gay haunt. If they did it on their side of the fence, no great problem. It's when they actually start sort of like intruding onto our side. That would be a problem. We actually caught a chap running down with an orange wig as we came up one day to check the fence line. And I think he thought, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've got village people arriving. <laughs> I'm in for a good one here. Well, how many times have I returned to this? You know, how many have we actually put on? I think you're paying 300 quid for a train ticket to go from point A to point B, and they want to know why. Because literally we're having to keep maintaining it, and it's costing more and more money to, you know, to rectify it. Just keep doing it until one day, I don't know, the relatives come along and tie wrap some flowers to the side of the fence because they got run over. Then it'd be a more tribute. To them, let's yeah, say. But then we'd get like done. Yeah. But then they blame us for having all in fence. Yeah. Yeah. My Johnny made an all in your fence and your train run him over. How ironic can you get? A trespasser is killed nearly every week on our railways. Stand back from the train, please. The train's leaving now. Six o'clock at Leeds Station and the commuters are eager to get home. Leeds is the worst in the country for passengers running across the tracks. It's an offence to trespass on the railway. Please keep off the tracks. People taking shortcuts to catch their train. Kids playing chicken, as well as the very drunk. They all seem oblivious to the dangers. Saturday, a person under the influence got off a platform in front of an oncoming train. This is madness. Trains are silent, trains are fast, and it's very, very risky. Unfortunately... Route director Phil Verster, responsible for everything between London King's Cross and Edinburgh, is launching Network Rail's anti-trespass campaign here at Leeds. Wendy's son was killed by a train while playing on the tracks. She's joining the campaign today to help raise awareness. For... All these years, since 1997, I've never said his name. There's like a spark, and it, it goes. There's just something missing. There's always something missing. And it's like somebody's ripped something out, and it, it's there all the time. And you still sometimes think of them, they're going to come home. And you see all the friends growing up, and they've got children, you, you wonder, what if? You, you've never got anything of that, have you? All I've got is, you know, come Christmas, birthdays, all I've got is I take some flowers down at the tracks. That's all I've got, my son. I've got photographs, but that's sort of the clearest one. It's the same one. I need somebody to digitally change his jumper on it or something so it looks different. You know. Because unfortunately, you know, you always end up with the same ones. That's me to look at this it. This is how you are. Good looking chap. Not bad for his age, was it? That was the cap that he had on the day before. Obviously, the one that he had on was destroyed. So that was the nearest I got, and it's, it's getting a bit tatty now, but 
goes everywhere, even when I'm all poshed up. Reports coming in of a, a person under a train in uh, Doncaster area. Um, hearing more reports as it comes in. Yeah, hello there. It's Network Rail Control at uh, York. Hiya. Um, we've got a fatality just occurred. They're thinking it might be about 16, 17 year old, maybe younger. Year so, uh, it, yeah, we're not sure about uh, opening things up as yet. It's thought the victim is a teenage boy who'd been trespassing on the tracks 40 miles south of Leeds. While police and network rail teams deal with the scene, Craig has to go and break the news to the boy's mother. Just confirm how many trains are stuck at the moment. Well, at the moment, well, itself and two others, another four stood behind that, and about 800 people on them. We are sorry that the services are subject to delay because of the fatality. Every effort is being made to restore services to normal as quickly as possible. Trains will have stopped running at the incident uh, for operational safety and also the respect for the for the deceased. Yeah. The reality of the report is that such is the state of the remains of the body that we could still be quite some time. With trains across the region stopped while the body is removed, Craig first calls in at the local police station for a briefing. It's very, very sad. This, this lad is um, one of our regular listeners. Sergeant Gregory was one of the first on site. ID is a problem because, of course, we've got significant yeah, injuries in court. Yeah. Yeah, but he's got a blue plaster cast on his arm, which is fairly convincing that it, right. that it is him. And um, two days ago, he was caught playing chicken with cars. A week ago, BTP have had some involvement of playing chicken on the railway right. track. Problem we've got is, of course, his mum. She's working nights, unaware that this has gone off, and yeah. we need to get that sorted. Yeah, we need to go up and do that. Mum works at the Hazard Superstore, one of the night staff working, so we're just going to have to walk in and find her. Right, yeah, go speak to Mum. One of them things, we've just got to go under the yard bit and, and ruin, ruin Mum's, uh, well, we'll probably ruin her life, bless her. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this sort of moment that you get before and you're just sort of thinking about... You're, you're about to sort of tell somebody the worst possible news and... It's you know, something it's not something you can take lightly, really. It's... Right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Do it. There's only one person that knows exactly what happened, and they can't tell us why they were doing it, why they were there. All right, Sam. If this is a tragic accident, and it looks like it is, it's a young life, isn't it? You know, that's, that, that's, that's potential gone right there. Is the um, duty manager available? If they, if they could come down and... Uh... She's just coming now, so... All right. Okie dokie. All right, cheers. Hi. I'm Craig. Do you want to just join us in? Lovely. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's not, uh, not an easy thing to do, not at all. And, y you know, it's such an instant and raw grief you know, there are so many why questions, you know. Um, it's... If a police officer tells you that they don't feel it, then they're not being honest with you. 
you hurt like hell. You, you know. I'm a big lad, but I cry, you know. Because you've got a lot of why questions yourself, you know. And, and then you go home to, you know, I go home to my my wife and my beautiful daughter and, you know, it's, it's hard not to carry a little bit of it. You know, you don't forget a name, you don't forget a place. Sometimes you don't even forget train numbers. It's 4am. All the trains have been cleared and Craig is now visiting the site of the fatality. He's here to do a last check of the tracks in daylight for any of the boys' personal items before the first trains are due. It's quite odd, isn't it? You know, another sort of the morning comes up and everything sort of changes, another day starts and all of a sudden there'll be thousands of commuters travelling this line and no idea as what's done on the night before and... Hmm. Anything personal, I would imagine, will be thrown on the upside. I did notice a couple of pieces of um, a white hoodie that were obviously... All right. ...and uh, okay. one sock. Get that in. There, that's okay. See, that's definitely looking like point point of impact. Yeah. Well, obviously, with downdraft from train, it's, it's, it's pulled it back. Daniel was just 15 years old. He'd been known to play near the train tracks, but it's not clear why he was there this time. Can you uh, pop that in there for me? Not thought to be a deliberate act. It's assumed it was a tragic accident. OK. Service. To Manchester Victoria via Halifax. Into battle. Come for your morning hug. <laughs> Train conductor Bridie has been on shift since the crack of dawn. She's on the 6.37 to Manchester, full of her regular commuters. Anyone need tickets? Any more tickets? Yes, sir. What you want You wouldn't believe what habits I learn about people when you do the same job for five years. <laughs> People have said to me, the toilet's been engaged for half an hour and I can look at the watch of where we are and I can know who it is. <laughs> That's how bad it is. <laughs> are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Bye. See ya. See ya. See you later. Bye. Time is money. How's that been? It's been a pleasure. It's been a right laugh. We'll do a lunch Sorry. next week. Is the ex-wife used to say? That were quick. <laughs> Oh, we've been falling then. <laughs> See you later. Everybody's rushing, especially in this day and age. On the morning when you're at Leeds Station, they're like, yeah, it's obviously a big city, one station. And when they're all coming over the escalator, if you stood back away from it all, it, it's just like millions of ants going over the escalator. Nobody stops. Doesn't matter what happens, I once saw a little old lady fall over and about four people stepped over her before anybody went to help her. I mean, obviously we all took that to work, but yeah, it seemed a little bit harsh. A lot of people just really don't have any thought for anybody else. I always remember my husband had just died and I weren't working fully, I was just collecting fares. This lady got hysterical about a train leaving three minutes before and there were no car in her down. I had to walk away and all I could think was, I wish I just had to worry about a train getting in three minutes later. It, did, it does make some things seem really, really petty sometimes. Yo, how long are we going to be here? Something for the signaler. Bullshit. Get in my pocket, you already seen it? I think it's the nature of the building and the nature of the job, you know. Fuck 
He might be possessed, he's lead station, might be possessed. Turns everybody into angry people. Everything's your fault, but it's, I can't understand it, because they'll go out there and they'll kind of change into nice people again. <laughs> Use your tickets and the barriers, please. Season two, it's got stuck in here. Again. Oh, I can't wait to get home from our boys. I miss them. Thank you very much. What's it like working with your dad? <laughs> You've got to be on your best behaviour. Yeah. It's a respect, isn't it? You've got to respect your dad. He'll tell me, railway job, your job is for life. That's what he'll say to me. He'll probably bollock me <laughs> if I'd leave. I'd like to go through first. Should use your tickets. I want it to like, be like, have my own business or something, you know, be a businessman or something. Nothing goes, it doesn't go your own way though, does it? Is she all right? Sure, I'm playing dead. By 10 pm, the busy commuters have gone, and now most of Imran's passengers have been for a drink or two. I thought this, I thought this man he said, You've had a few drinks, you're taking off your train. They took me off my fucking train out. They fucking robbed me. They took my ticket off me. Fucking pricks. I swear to God. As the nightclubs and bars surrounding the station begin to close, Imran prepares himself for party-goers of all ages taking the last trains home. Yeah, we have to wait for it, but that is, that's bad, is that, but that guy. I mean, it's we in there, full, full view of people. Ah, oh, dear in me. It's come straight through. No, I'm just going to go. Just come here. Just take a seat. There's just weed over there. Weed? Yeah, all the weed. That big puddles and stuff. There's people going about the everyday business, yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm you're still urinating in a you know, public place. It's not acceptable, so really, is no, it? No, I, I, okay. I, I, I'm so sorry. I don't drink. I mean, I was asking, how would you like to be drunk? What happens? And they were explaining it to me. I still don't get it. Must be strong stuff. Can't wait to get home. Yes, sir. Can I Sorry? Can I go, mate? Fitzwilliam, 13B. It's good enough to that, mate. You've got to be quick. Right? You... I'm going that way. Come on. Can you check me, please? Yeah. So, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You sure? Can you check me, please? Yeah, I'll take you. Don't worry. Come this... all right to check me? Yeah, straight yeah. on. Can you give you some money? <laughs> I don't want no money, it's no. all right. Can I get you some money now? No, no, I'm not here, all right. Where are we going now? It's down here. Oh, sorry, oh. this... You don't know where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, you know, all right, I see you. I need to get my trade you're out. You're licking me. What's that? You're licking me. No, no, honestly, I'm not. Come here. That's your train, I need to get my train now. Downstairs, you can use the stairs if you want. <laughs> I'll be licking him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some of them are double my age. I'm like, whoa. You should um, look, look up to your elders and, uh, and if you're looking up to people who are drunk and swearing and, you know, just doing what they like, it, it's not nice. Imran will be back on the ticket barriers tomorrow evening. It's the wettest summer for a century, and Yorkshire is one of the worst affected areas. For the railway staff, weather like this is far more challenging than the most difficult of passengers. 
And it's Friday, the busiest day of the week. Have we got another storm coming? It's gone dark. It's like night time suddenly, isn't it? Are we going to float away from Leeds Station? <laughs> Weather. Dozens of rapid response teams are deployed to keep the trains moving. Torrential downpour in certain areas, isn't it? The drains just can't take the volume of water. Cut all the caution in for definite here. And because lightning's it, that's all counters. It's like I'm piss wet through out here, just checking all flooding, because all the top of the roadway is flooded as well. First stop is on the outskirts of Leeds. Here, a road next to the train line has flooded because the council's drain is blocked. Because they don't maintain it on a regular basis, fills up, water then flows through the fence line, straight onto the railway, and people keep asking why you're slowing my train down again. It's because your local council couldn't bother to come and clean a drain out once or twice a year. If nothing interfered with railway, trains would run on time. But because it's literally external things, or we'll keep naffing the railway, like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's flooded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's always a story. No idea. No idea. Not at this moment in time. But they haven't got people out working yeah, on no, it. Yeah, no, no, yeah. There's not, in all honesty, there's not a great deal we can do because it's a sheer volume of water was coming down. A month's worth of rain has fallen in just one day and flooding sites are popping up all over Kevin Stev's patch as water pours off the neighbouring land onto the tracks. This, this is a classic. It used to be wasteland. They build a brand new housing estate or they build umpteen new factories. They haven't piped it into anything. They've just literally stuck it onto embankment and sort of gone, there you go, it's yours now, you deal with it. There's definitely no trains going at this moment in time because it's flooded. If I wait for the next one, will it definitely come? No. There's no let up in the rain, and by three o'clock, flooding has crippled the network. All trains on this main line from Leeds to London have now been stopped. Controlled havoc would be a good description. Uh, it's a weather event, it's something that's quite unprecedented for the time of year. Looks like every route we've got, we've got has got major incidents on it. And with rush hour fast approaching, the pressure is on to get the trains moving. Hello, mate. Is this urgent or can it wait? There's a massive tree stump that's wedged in uh, at side. And then we're off to Carverley. It may need the sandbags rebuilding back up. I hope he's not looking for his fleece. I've just pinched his. It's the only dry one we've got left. <laughs> every, every minute counts, and it's, it's things that we have no control over. Kev and Stev have been dispatched to the site where trains are stranded. The line is closed because once flood water rises above the rail, there's a very real risk of derailment. Basically, when the, the rail edge covered, it's not very right practical to start running trains on something you can't actually see. Because you don't know what's floating in it. We don't know what's sort of track, do we? It's washed in with track. The drainage system is now overwhelmed, so there's nowhere to pump the water to. The only thing they can do is try to channel the water away from the rails. Once we get it so it can actually drop down below rail head, we then, to believe it or not, start running at five mile an hour, at least get passengers up and running again. You know what I mean? Been delayed as well. yeah. Rush hour. Routes are now blocked in almost every direction, and staff on the front line are struggling to give any options to the passengers. Do you know that train to Glasgow has been delayed? Oh, right. yeah. uh, what are the chances of it getting here? Yeah? Um, I don't know. No, that's being completely honest because it's, it's, you've been stuck behind a flood. I don't, I don't know what to say. Do you know if the next one will be running or...? I, I don't. I, I would doubt it at the moment. The, only, the only way... Right? It's the only, that's the only train that goes to Skipthernska where we need to be. You said Sheffield. 
and I just well, want to know well, if it's going to be running. I was running. telling you about Sheffield the Sheffield train, train. Not, is... not a Thurnsco train. I know you're probably having a really bad day and all that, but well, no, no, you're supposed no, to be no. calming me down, not me calming you down, mate. <laughs> Going slowly. Kev and Stev have at last managed to drop the water levels enough to open the line. The underpants are really wet now. But getting trains moving is a slow process. They're only allowed to run at five miles per hour, causing them to stack up as they await their turn to go through the flooded area. You delayed my train, you. I'm sat on a train, you're stood outside the train. It must be your fault why I am not getting between point A and point B. It's always our fault. Flooding, so why didn't you deal with it? Oh, my life. Um, ah. uh, right, let me just do some maths first. For every minute a train is delayed by flooding, trespasses or any technical problems, it's network rail that foots the bill. Been absolutely phenomenal. We've, we've accrued in just one day alone, and this is just looking at lightning strikes, which account for 2,600 minutes, 16 and a half thousand minutes worth of delay caused by flooding across the route. In a day, that's probably two months worth of budget in terms of minutes, which is huge. Right, then, because that air was. Let's jump to my bus first. If you've got a car packed in the station, I'll get into the station. You don't need to be rude to me, I'm asking you a simple question. Are we getting bulk taxis or are we getting individual taxis? Simple question. Yeah, just hang on here. The way, way, these course member of staff will come and sort you out very shortly. Network Rail has to pay up to £200 for every minute of delay to the train companies, some of which is passed on to the passengers, claiming ticket refunds or taxis home. He's on his own. We just have to be patient. I appreciate it's not been a great night for you, but he is doing his best, all right? Yes, he will do, yes. Anybody else wanting a claim form? Might be complete form for the lack of complete form in a minute. <laughs> We're running out very drastically, yeah. Chuffing hell. From my opinion, it would be so much better if this was all excludable and we didn't pay anything. And somebody said, that's something you can't do anything about, therefore we'll write it off as a day. Uh, but the regimes don't work like that. There you go, love. That's your claims form for you, OK? You on go, Jerry's love. route, compensation paid out for flooding on this one day is a million pounds. Bingley and Keithley! People wonder why trains are expensive. It's completely nonsense. Bit of a lonely existence. You have to enjoy your own company. Which I do, to a degree. It's like wildlife on one on this job, isn't it? I mean, dogs, cats, foxes, a bit, a bit more. Never hit a magpie. Far too clever. Pigeons aren't the cleverest of animals, are they? They tend to sit in a tree and wait until you're coming past and then fly out in front of you. Pigeon playing chicken, I would have thought. Pheasants tend to stand on rail and just sort of look around and they don't. It must be something to do with not having binocular vision because they can't judge perspective. So you take you about four feet away before they realise. You know. Other well, sort just go Oop, and then you hit them. yourself. Hiya. Young man. I am a regular train spotter around West Yorkshire and I come to Leeds quite a lot and I know quite a lot of East Coast staff. 
including drivers, guards, Hanif himself. A fan club. <laughs> I'm 17 and I absolutely love diesels. <laughs> No, not very pretty, these ones. These are modern. Train of the week. Not my train of the week. My train of the week is a different one to that. That's a proper engine. Class 37, built in 1960. Brilliant celebration of British engineering. Built in this country. Still going on the main line 50 years later. Not mine, but I do it part own one the same. I think for us, a lot of it's about... It's, it's, it's us recreating our past. It's how we used to work in the days of British Rail, one before. Um, where we ran the railway as, as, a, as a purely railway rather than a business. In those days, it was it was about playing trains. Nowadays, you have got a different world you're working in. A man in dark clothing has been spotted by the tracks. A suspected cable thief. It's top priority for British Transport Police Officer Craig. Come on, Mr Taxi, what are you doing? Over the past five years, cable theft has become one of the biggest threats to the railways. And Yorkshire suffers the most. So we've got a cable theft in progress. This has been a sighting of a male who's... Uh, European looking, the line side looking uh, at the uh, cable at the side of the rail. Because we get a lot of cables left, so uh, we make it an immediate grading and we get out there and see what we've got. The concern is if the man steals essential signalling cable, no trains can run. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> sweet child of mine. Thefts happen every week in this region. Thieves stripping the cable for the valuable copper inside. And this is the area we're looking at here, just to our right. And there's a bit of uh, there's a bit of um, track up the side. And at the end of the track, where's he running to? What's male in the grey there? Him doing a legger. Doesn't match this one. He's running, isn't he? Yeah. That's the guy. Take a grip of him. BX Charlie 38 on scene, two males with us at this time, one match in description, stand by for update. Description for? Right, okay. You've not been on the railway at all? No, I'm dying, I've been on the railway. Right, okay. Where, I'm just going to speak to my colleague and check this guy out. Do you know this gentleman at all? No. Right, no problem. Just wait with me a It second. turns out he's just a passerby. So Craig turns his attention to the other man who does match description. At this point in time, I'm going to search you, okay? Because you've been on that side of the railway, yeah, and because we get cables stolen, you can search you, search you under section one of pace, all right? Right. Right. I'll let you just turn this way for me so I can feel that pocket. Mm. Okay. Okay. Straightforward trespass. Just have a just have a word, Craig. Yeah. There's nothing that would suggest to me that he's anything other than. Right. Um, Probably a little bit naive. Are you reporting for trespass? Yeah, he's going to get reported for yeah, trespass. Okay. So. Not we'll leave you to it. Right. The man says he's been taking a shortcut home, but he has been trespassing and will face a fine of up to £1,000. It'd be lovely to get a cable thief, but, you know, on this occasion he's a trespasser, isn't he, sir? As far as cable thieves are concerned, it's not dark enough, I would say, just yet. You know, as we get into the night, then, yeah, they come out, you know, the cover of darkness. Um, well, we'll see what the night brings. Cable thieves cost the railway £16 million every year and disrupt nearly 4 million train journeys. It's Monday night, and British Transport Police Officer Steve Kite is visiting a known hotspot. I think our Bob has just done this. Yeah, today. Has it been caught? Yeah, it's been caught. Four six. Just there. Yeah. 
it's been lifted there. And what they've done is obviously just gone straight through this chicken wire fence and you're immediately next to hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of um, copper rich cable. And um, over the past six weeks, they've just systematically stripped it away. This this stretch of track now has probably seen something in the region of about 100, 150,000 pounds worth of cable theft. That sort of money they'll never get. Scrap value for them, at best, is a couple of grand. And they won't stop. They can't stop. These are people who don't want to get caught. We were carrying axes, knives. Policing Britain's 20,000 miles of track, most of it through remote areas, is a challenge. Steve is part of a specialist task force with high tech cameras and alarms at their disposal. But tonight, they deploy some plain old fashioned surveillance from a bush. Ten miles up the track, a different gang of thieves has stolen cable from a commuter line for the second night in a row. That's a helicopter. Could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. Could These lads have said where well, they've seen cable out, out the troughing. Just finding the cut in miles of cable and then rejointing and testing up to 96 connections can take several hours. If the technical team can't fix it before morning, the commuter trains won't run. Oh, yeah. there, they've cut it on that. And all of a sudden, it's, it's kicked in again. Price of copper must have gone. Oh, it's quite clean, that's what it is. Yeah. It's well, they, it could be, like, high voltage. We had one last week where they found a dead body uh, underneath some arcing cable that was obviously a fifth attempt. So, to some, I'd say poetic justice. 25,000 volts is a lot of volts to play with. It's a constant battle that we are faced with that we weren't faced with 15 years ago, even. I think the pressure of, of living in the UK in 2012, financially, has led people that wouldn't have committed such crimes to commit what they believe to be an easy hit. Do you think they're getting cleverer? Or? Oh, they're getting on very clever. I think some of them even know what they're doing now, don't they, lads? I hope we're not doing this just to set it all up for them again for tomorrow night. Steve and his colleagues have been waiting in the bushes for two hours now, and they've just spotted movement further down the track. Down. Got it. Got it. Down. Come here. There's a torch in the distance. What is it? Follow it round the corner. To the left. Yeah, See yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got it. There's someone in the track with a torch and there's a vehicle. Come on, then. Take zero four if you can cover where we've just come from. We've got this end covered. It's the police! British transport police! Uh, network line. Where are we, You okay? Just the two of you. There's another lad that's already over that there. Right, no worries. OK. Yeah, all right, Cheers, guys. All right. Cheers, boys. I got all excited for a minute, then. Never say never. No. We know what's going to happen. They know they're going to do it. They can't stop doing it, and we can't stop trying to catch them. Sometimes they win, sometimes we win. It's a score draw at the minute, I think. Let's go, wins. Let's go, wins. Is it? Back in Leeds, the last trains of the night are leaving. Stragglers remain around the station, and the police are still on duty. 
I need to get to one. Do you know what I mean? I've got a little boy. There's no more trace to hold tonight. Do not, do, do not talk to me like I'm a school boy. Please. There's no more trace to hold. Son. I'm going to ask you once to leave the station. I've asked you nicely. I'd like you to leave. Earlier today, this man was removed from a train for smoking and drunkenness. Told to sober up before travelling, he's continued to drink and has now missed his last train home. Bad man. Bad man. Sometimes it's easier with newborn babies than with grown adults in, uh, in alcohol. Give him one last opportunity to disappear. The British Transport Police has the same powers as any other police force, but is paid for by network rail, train companies and ultimately through ticket fares. Oh, no. Look at his deck. Look at his. I'm not going to tell you again. No. We're busy dealing with other jobs. We cannot keep coming back to you because you're drunk. Right, disappear off the station, please. No, go away. We've got other things to do. Right, listen. You've had a bad day. You've been to a funeral, right? And I've, and I've allowed for that. I've given you the benefit of the doubt, allowing for the bad day you've had. Leave the station, please, or you will be arrested. Disappear. If he carries on, he's going to get himself arrested for being drunk and disorderly because we can't leave him like this and he just won't leave. Nicholas! 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 You don't have to say anything, but may I'm a defence if you feel to mention one question or something which will let me land it back. I mean, so I don't need it, I don't deserve this. Bloody hell. This is the alias, my brother. Hello there. He's the middle one. The, the grumpy one. <laughs> is that true? No, it's not true. He's the team leader. <laughs> I always got to the table first, as you can see. For <laughs> my size. <laughs> <Didn't> it? <laughs> it's like a second home, isn't it? You know everybody, you know what I mean? How's it going? It's bad, mate. Thank God. You've got your family and then you've got your railway family. Yeah, some people think of it that way. It's, it's like that. I suppose. There's always one brother that gets on your tits, isn't there? I'm waiting for my daddy. Boom! Ah! <laughs> it's good to see you. So, Daddy, did you have a good time on honeymoon? If you sort of start to believe all they're all the same, well, it's another drunk or it's another ticket fraud. To become cynical and sort of say, mm, you know, I'm not going to deal with this. It's just time to go then. Time to go. Ta da. Suspect package on a train at Leeds. It's a unique industry. There's nothing else I know that's anything like it. Well, when I started, I'd been interested. Probably about 12, but the days of writing numbers down are 20 years gone. Once upon a time. But. It's not done me any harm. I've ended up where I am, doing a job I love doing. Um, and, and very much, that's, that's what it does. It, it gives you the passion to try to deliver a better railway, no matter how difficult it may be at times.